We're going to talk about death crosses. I know it's very, very common, but I'm going to explain what I use instead. So hi everyone, welcome to the channel. If you are new, make sure you've subscribed, hit the bell button, and obviously leave a like. It does help. Now, a few little changes to the channel. I'm gonna be publishing more content. I'm gonna be doing possibly two videos a day in some cases. I'm gonna be doing a normal video like this, and a video that will go out in the afternoon before these ones as market analysis. It's kind of just to break it up a little bit. I've been receiving some wild requests of doing certain coins, a bit of analysis. So I thought, well, fill the gap a little bit whilst price is a bit random so that'd be good i'm also going to be bringing back channel memberships because i was doing a newsletter having so many issues with that so i'm going to go and revert back to some additional content on youtube instead which makes sense anyways death cross boom what is it now i want to say this now before you get fully deep into this video now make sure you do stay because i'm going to show you what i use as a trend bias overall but i think the death cross in cryptocurrency isn't ideal it isn't ideal because of the volatility. It moves a lot. There's a lot of false signals, a false dawn on it. And yeah, structurally and stuff like that and data analysis side and statistically, it does have a degree of worth. It works and it should only be used, in my opinion, as a catalyst when, whether you should buy the dip or whether you should wait and see what happens overall for some further accumulation phases in different market cycles. You have a death cross, you have a golden cross. I'm going to explain two of them, right? Very, very simple. Then we'll look through the history of some coins, some assets in terms of how it kind of worked and if it did work and if you'd win or not. It's better for old coins if you are catching the golden cross change, but you also got to use other metrics as well to figure out is it going to happen because sometimes you get a bit of volatility, especially when it's sideways. It'll pop up, it'll come back down, it'll go under, it'll pop up. It'll, oh, it's a nightmare. So you've got to be careful. So essentially what it is, it is a 50-day moving average followed by the 200 day when it crosses over to the upside and the 50 is above the 200 it is then known as a golden cross bullish right goes up death cross is the opposite when the 50 goes below the 200 it is then therefore a death cross now statistically it's pretty good but it is only a short-term bias in my opinion overall especially when you are looking at for me anyways cryptocurrency does it show bear markets in crypto? No, not really, no. It does in some ways, if you look in hindsight in terms of how long it's been on, but there's at least three or four false signals for that. And it's like, oh, bear market, and it didn't happen. So you just gotta be careful. You've gotta look at other metrics. Don't just go individually on this. A lot of people are fixated on this, and I don't know why. Same with the pie indicator, same with other things. You gotta look at a combination of everything, and this is only a lagging indicator and it's only going to be one thing only delayed and that's a problem so again just to quickly mix it up as you can see this is the golden side of it now you can already see already in this picture it's already kind of a bit skewy now personally the higher time frames are better to, to view this higher time frames go from the daily time frame onwards in my opinion the daily is the most common because you can imagine 200 days on the daily that lagging indicator it's a lot of data so is a 50 day a lot of data 50 days 200 days it's a lot so you can see already now where would the best possible case scenario be you can use individual indicators individual emas individual moving averages whatever moving average you want you can buy on the support level the moving 50 moving average that could be won by our order there you've also got the 200 moving average you can buy when any asset is above the 200 moving average sell when it goes below it and you've obviously got the golden cross so this is the biggest lag the biggest lag is that crossover when it goes between both of them that is where i find the problem that is why i only use one ema and you most likely know it if you watch my content which is a 21 moving average which in my opinion works very well in crypto but you've got to remember as well, driven timeframes also work very, very well with certain things. So you get different variations. You'll look at maybe the total two chart. I like to look at the five day, weirdly, I know, moving average of the 21 EMA. I think that is really good for the total two chart. And that's probably a metric that I will use. For me, I want to explain it in this video what and why I use it. But overall, you've got to look at the you know the minerals of this so if i quickly jump on hello this is it essentially on bitcoin now you can see already it's a bit wavy it's a bit weird and yeah if you if you remove the candles it's like yeah it's just lines but look at the drops 
Look at the drops. It's crazy. So you think here, right? Um, yeah, we'll start off in this period here. So you've got basically the red line here. I'll zoom in. Is the moving average 50? Okay, I believe. No, it's not. It's 200. Is that the 200? No, it's 50. So that's the 50. The orange line is the 200. So if you're thinking, I'm going to enter the market on every every time the candles go above the 50 moving average, it's not very good. It's not very good at all because realistically, it's still lagging. Short term, you're fine. Short term on here, you're not. It's one of those things. This is why you got to look at so many different things. But if we're looking at false dawns here, we have got a death cross here. We've got one there. And as soon as it happens, by the way, <laughs> boom. How many people would have shut themselves? Because you've got this massive, massive drop. And this is what would have happened. The day of the death cross, guess what happens? The price rally is about $3,000. Ooh. <laughs> so you've got to be careful. Again, looking through, long term, it paid off well. But can you imagine if everyone's talking, death cross, death cross, death cross, get your fork out, and then all of a sudden, pff, sure, you know, wrecked. <laughs> I'm going to put a leverage short on a death cross. No, don't do it. Um, so, yeah. And again, another one here. Look at this. Boom. It's a golden cross, guys. Tell everyone. Tell your friends. Tell your cats. Tell your, tell your cat to tell your other cats. Well, there's a bit of golden cross in the bull markets here, boys and girls. Well, you've already missed half the leg. You've already missed it from this low, or even from this point to this point. The price has already moved up. Let's just look at the price, 37% on Bitcoin. It actually, by the time it actually hit the data point, it's even higher, 63%. So they are laggy, very, very laggy. And this is why you should only look at them in certain ways. If you see that the market is in a golden ratio, as in the cross has happened, so you will look at certain indicators. So if you're in, let's just say from the start of this year, you're like looking at this and you're thinking, right, I only want to buy this asset when it's above certain ranges and it's going to be held by supports. If you're going on the bias and the overall inkling of this is a golden cross, we're doing okay. We are supported by the moving average 20 or the EMA 21 or moving average 50. I will buy at every opportunity we tap that EMA, 50, that moving average 50 or EMA, whatever, what, what you know. You're only using, in my opinion, anyways, you're only using this overall metric to go, are we bullish or are we bearish as a general gist? But it shouldn't be just used as an exclusive. When you get sideways choppy action like this, this is where it gets hard. It's like, are you going to really go and go bear market over a period of a month? No, you're not. You know, this is why people are going, oh, it's going to be a bear market. When it happens, well, it's not realistically. It's only a bear market if you are above all metrics and the sentiment change. A golden cross, a death cross, whatever it may be, is only one metric. You've got to look at other moving averages. You've got to look at other sentiment values, other volume metrics, other bits and pieces that would indicate it is a bear market. This is why I do this. Now, this is what I do. Let's remove all this. And as I've said, it's entirely up to you. I use, because of cryptocurrency, a faster EMA, the 21. I think that 21 as a Fibonacci number, I think it is by far the best. And what I like to look at is if you are on a normal asset, as you can see here, levels of support of it is pretty good. You can see it going sideways as well. You can also see so much stuff. If you're playing on the rule that I will only buy an asset when it crosses over or it's above or I'll start selling when it goes below it, you'd probably be much better off than having that big massive lag between the 50 and the 200 day, which I've already shown you before. It's pretty laggy realistically. So you've got to be, you know, brutally honest with yourself. Do you want to get out without losing all your money on the table? Or do you want to get, you know, want to stay in and just be a bit boring? Realistically, holding works in terms of accumulation. I want more Bitcoin, I will hold Bitcoin. But if you're not taking some money off the table to then grow it elsewhere, then kind of pointless realistically. So total two, let's look at this. Now, this is what, the important element of this video is. I said before, I like looking at the five day. If I look at the five day chart, this is the three day, just to give you an insight. It's kind of okay, but I think the five day chart is probably got the best sort of situation overall. For some reason, it just looks clean. It shows us a good level of support on this moving average. And this is where I'm thinking, is this the bull and the bear market for the altcoins? Is this the sort of thing we should be looking at? 
because I've already pointed out here, as you can see, it's on the log scale. If we do a 92% correction, now I know I'm going to scare people by saying this, the last bull market into a bear market was a 92% correction. You can see it here, right? It went all the way down from a hundred, no, 474 billion all the way down to 36 billion. That's the entire market cap of altcoins, by the way, removing the head of Bitcoin and just altcoins. Basically, 8,000 coins as Dogecoin, essentially, just one asset. It was crazy in market cap. If that happens again, this 92%, I'm just saying if it's probable cause here, you know, it doesn't matter if it happens or not. It's just a prediction. If this does happen at the worst case scenario, we're going to go back to previous levels of where this has kind of been resistant, which is scary. And this is why I'm thinking on the five day chart, if we lose this level, I'm going to be saying we could be going into a natural bear market here. Yes, it may only last for a couple of months. But for me, do I want to be buying dips no, I want to be buying floors. I want to be buying bottoms. I want to be buying bottom reversals. And we've already had a little test here of 613. This is a moving average, which is pretty quite, it's fairly strong realistically when you think about it. And even if you're looking at the weekly time frame as well, if you wanted to go a little bit later and go on the weekly, we are still held by support here. So if you wanted to go a little bit safer, go to the weekly time frame. But for me, buy old coins when it crosses over. Simple. On the weekly time frame, if you're looking at this, it's simple, isn't it, really silly. If you're thinking, right, we are below the EMA, yes, it goes above it a little bit, like anything, it always lags. But realistically, if this is then resistance, you don't want to be buying. You just you just want to be waiting and seeing what happens. You want to wait for things to just settle down, chill out, stop the dumping. And then when you start seeing actual bottom reversal patterns and start to see a trend forming and you start getting that first lower high on the chart on the weekly, you can then start buying because imagine, right, if you jumped out at $185 billion, right? Yes, there's always going to be a lag from the top. This is why you always take profit. This is why you always take money off the table. Don't wait for indicators because they lag. But if you're using this as a gauge going, right, I am not going to buy until I see a first higher low. And guess what? $182 billion or whatever it would be. And then you see the first sign here, $44 billion. That is much better than what you probably get on a death cross, essentially, or a golden cross. Let's have a little look, actually. There you go. You'd be... Actually, no, where would you be? Roughly up here. But realistically, yeah, you're looking at much higher. So, yeah, for me, overall, looking at things, you got to get in quicker, you got to get out quicker. It makes life much easier. But that's how I do it. Personally, that's on the total two chart, by the way, not on Bitcoin. That is the overall market. But if I'm looking at the Bitcoin chart, and even if you're looking at the weekly time frame on this, by the way, we're below it. So realistically, if you're if you're not looking to hold anymore, you may want to be looking at you know sell orders. But historically, we're looking at it. It's easier. It's much easier. Yeah, you got a few little times where it goes below it and above it, below it, above it. But realistically, to sideways market. If you're looking at that and you're looking at trend analysis. Got a low, lower high, lower low, technically a lower high from this point, and then a new lower low. Anyways, hope you enjoy. I shall see you again very, very soon.